Do we reside within a black hole? We call the universe the space in which we live, but if we pay closer attention, it appears that a black hole and our universe are connected in some way. Considering this, is it possible that we are doing so? This turns out to be a useful question to answer because so many individuals find themselves with a lot of questions about the universe we live in when they first start studying cosmology and astrophysics. We may claim that everyone has an interest in a variety of existential issues that have philosophical and scientific solutions. We humans ask questions all night long, which is why this occurs. Asking inquiries like that could make one crazy. But don't worry, we are here for you and are making an effort to assist you. Are there any similarities between the universe and a black hole? They appear so dissimilar, but are they really? Find out more about the connections and differences between black holes and the existence of the universe, between event horizon and particle horizon, and between black hole singularity and big bang singularity by following me on this voyage across space. The observable universe is the interior of a black hole in a black hole cosmology, also known as Schwarzschild cosmology or the black hole cosmological model. These models were first put forth by mathematician I.J. Good. Any such model must have the observable universe's Hubble radius equal to its Schwarzschild radius, which is calculated by multiplying the universe's mass by the Schwarzschild proportionality constant. Although it is well known that this is almost certainly the case, the majority of cosmologists view this close match as a coincidence. But first, let's step back and think about how a black hole and our universe are related. The first similarity is between the universe's mass and a black hole's size. When we examine the universe and compare it to a black hole, there is a strange coincidence that arises when we ask, if there were a black hole the size of the universe, how much mass would the black hole need to be the mass of the universe? You plug this incredibly straightforward equation into the Schrodinger equations to obtain the universe's mass. It's a little bit intriguing that you can calculate the universe's size by entering the universe's mass into the black hole calculations. The universe and black holes do appear to share certain similarities at first glance. Event and particle horizons also occur simultaneously. Event horizon, the line defining a black hole's perimeter. The escape velocity is equal to the speed of light at the event horizon. Nothing inside the event horizon can ever breach the barrier and escape beyond it, including light, because general relativity holds that nothing can move faster than the speed of light. Nothing that enters a black hole can thus neither escape from it nor be seen from outside the event horizon. The particle horizon, also known as the cosmological horizon, is the farthest point from which an observer could have received light from particles during the early universe. Due to the expansion of the universe, it is not simply the age of the universe times the speed of light, as in the Hubble horizon, but rather the speed of light multiplied by the conformal time. It serves as the boundary between the observable and the unobservable regions of the universe, so its distance at the current epoch defines the size of the observable universe. A cosmic horizon's existence, characteristics, and importance depend on the specific cosmological model. Additionally, the Big Bang and black holes both have the idea of the singularity. It is clear that there are some linkages between the particle and event horizons. We get sucked into a black hole, and once inside, we are unable to exit. We are inside the universe trying to escape, but we are unable to do so because there is a limit to how far we can travel. But is this evidence sufficient to say that we are currently residing inside a black hole? Obviously not. Let's try to talk about the distinctions between the universe and a black hole now. The first distinction. Actually, the Big Bang singularity is distinct from the black hole singularity. A gravitational singularity, a one-dimensional point in the center of a black hole where gravity and density are infinite and space-time curves infinitely, is where the known rules of physics break down. It contains a significant amount of mass in an infinitely small volume. 
It is the point where all laws of physics break down, according to renowned American physicist Kip Thorne. According to current theory, as an object enters a black hole and moves closer to the singularity at its center, it will stretch out or become spaghettified as a result of the increasing gravitational pull on different parts of it. Eventually, it will presumably lose all three dimensions and vanish irrevocably into the singularity. However, a person witnessing the scene from a secure distance outside would see things differently. Relativity theory predicted that they would observe the object moving more slowly as it got closer to the black hole until it finally came to a full stop at the event horizon, never really entering the black hole. Instead, the Big Bang Singularity, also known as the Initial Singularity, is a singularity hypothesized to have existed before to the Big Bang and to have held all of the universe's energy and space-time. The Planck Epoch, the earliest span of time in the history of the cosmos includes the instant that immediately follows the first singularity. Singularity of a black hole is merely a spot in space. Time contained within a bigger cosmos, instead the Big Bang Singularity is the origin of the universe and the place where everything began. The second distinction. We can compare a black hole's event horizon to a bubble since it is immersed once again in the broader universe and once you enter, you cannot leave. In contrast, wherever you go in the universe, you are already inside the bubble. Third distinction. A black hole singularity is also something that will happen in the future. If you fall into one, no matter how hard you try to escape, you will always end up there, regardless of where you go or how hard you try to get there. The future is constantly involved. The Big Bang singularity, on the other hand, is an event from the past. The singularity cannot be avoided if you go through time, but if you move into the future, you are free to travel anywhere and in any direction without encountering the singularity. So, we appear to have gained additional knowledge. However, it still falls short. In fact, it appears that we have contributed some fresh information without reaching an agreeable conclusion. There is still no response to our query. Although there are significant distinctions, we also learned that there are linkages between black holes and our universe. What is reality? It would seem that mathematical creations rather than physical explanations are where the truth is hidden. This is why. We view our universe and our reality through the lens of Einstein's relativity. If you look around the universe and sort of play the pretend game where a black hole is, the fact that it looks like a black hole is just a coincidence. The reason for this is that we are describing our universe and black holes using the same equations. Using the equations from the general relativity theory, we characterize both of them. A collection of equations can be used in a variety of situations. In our situation, it can be used to explain both the evolution of the cosmos and a black hole. Because the solutions in both situations come from the same set of equations, they are essentially comparable once the set of equations has been mathematically solved. Do you notice the tenuous link that unites the two? We could claim that maths, not physics, is the reason we are deceived. As a result, occasional coincidences occur. Naturally, there are some similarities between the universe and black holes. For instance, both are believed to have a symmetrical distribution, which leads to mathematical problems with similar solutions. But we might also ask, what if it wasn't a mathematical coincidence and it turns out that we do, in fact, inhabit a black hole? There would be no change. Our universe's evolution would be described by the same equations. We would all have the same cosmological knowledge. We wouldn't learn anything because the particle constant would still be our only constraint. We would not benefit in any way. Therefore, even while there is a risk that we could end up in a black hole, we advise you as Paul M. Sutter once said, don't take that similarity too far. A collection of spherically symmetric solutions can occasionally just be a set of spherically symmetric solutions, just as a cigar occasionally is just a cigar. We discovered that today and we'd like to drop a tip for you, dream on, but don't lose sight of reality, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars, as Oscar Wilde once said. 
However, even when gazing at the stars, we feel the need to occasionally point out that we are all in the same predicament. Get your feet back on the ground because science is what inspires you to dream, but science is concrete because it is made of real thing and real bodies. Do you believe that humans could survive inside a black hole? How did you find the video? Tell us in the comment section below.